it is the Great Guitar Build-Off. Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to my Great Guitar Build-Off entry into the Invitational Competition. I had decided actually to sort of mess with you a little bit and change our format. Instead of putting out four or five videos or 20 or so, we've decided to start with the Super Reddit and then you can come back after the fact. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to put out uh, the build series you normally expect from us. Go and check out the other builders in both the professional and the invitational categories of Great Guitar Build Off. It is absolutely incredible what we and they are doing. Uh, it's just so mind-blowingly cool. And while you're at it, check out the kit, freestyle, and scratch build categories of the public facing competition. I have rarely been as inspired uh, by other guitar builders as I have through watching just what's happening in this small microcosm of the luthier, luthier world. So yeah, some seriously cool things to check out. This is a watch inspired build, but it is the prototype for something that's gonna come a little bit later. I am going to keep this as clean, as sexy, as bright, and as beautiful as I possibly can. I'm, sh I'm sure I'll find a way to overcomplicate things. So funnily enough, this is a, a Jaguar shape. Uh, and this is funny because uh, when I started this, I hadn't had an order for the carry build, which is essentially the same thing. The beautiful thing is, though, having decided that, I've already got a bunch of custom-made templates that will help. This is the template that I've been using for the uh, for the carry build, but uh, internally that's just a little bit not attractive. So my first thing to do is uh, adjust that template, cut away some of the excess, and uh, end up with something more attractive because this whole thing is going to be see-through. I've got one of the uh, now discontinued Crimson Uncut kits. I'm sorry for that, and. Uh, we're gonna have some fun. Mm -hmm. So that was our initial thought. Center line. I need a center line. Okay, let's put this template on. We've got a little bit of a gap there where the body blank is a little bit narrower than I would like. So I'm gonna just customize the shape of this guitar a tad by pulling it in and putting a couple of pieces of, uh, of MDF in there. Just a little bit of glue just to hold that in place. Okay, so, much routing to do, and here's my router. Okay, so I'm going to start in the hole here, go halfway around, and see what happens. Oh, yes. And that's actually what we want. Normally that's the waste.
Okay, I, yeah, I don't want to drop that. It's, it's not as delicate as it looks. So the acrylic is going to be sitting above the top of what used to be, or above what used to be the top of the guitar. So the brake angle, which was for a traditional Strat style uh, flat bridge, it's going to be wrong even for that. And then on top of that, I'm probably going to end up putting a uh, some sort of a tunematic, probably uh, on the top. So I'm going to have to raise the neck up. I'm still I'm changing my mind from one minute to the next on how I, on what I want to paint this. Ah, actually, while we're in here, what are we doing for the headstock? I don't know. So the, the traditional thing is to have a, essentially a Fender style headstock. I do think, yeah, I mean, should we go for 70s? Should we go big? Maybe we should. That is a neck pocket. I do want it a little bit bigger than this though. Just a little bigger. I can always take off more afterwards. That was me being distracted by something else. Uh, I'm gonna play with the body now. I am not comfortable with this area. I don't think this is strong enough. I'm gonna go with the original idea and uh, glue in some veneer. I'm jumping the gun and putting the masking tape on the strip before I put it down. This might, might be a really bad idea. So I'm not worried about these areas up here so much. I'm worried about the guitar being dropped on its strap button or something and cracking there. But in the interests of an even finish, uh, I'm gonna put the, mask, the, uh, the veneer absolutely everywhere I can. This is also a little oversized, so I'm hoping I'm gonna have to cut off a little bit of veneer top and bottom. So yeah, it's that little corner that's causing me some trouble. Onto the other side, and I'm going to glue this in, and, and you don't need to watch that. You've just watched me do it on the other side. Yeah, go away. Get out of my face. Here we go, and this is going to be left over a weekend to do its thing. It's been a good weekend. It's a little bit uh, chilly in here. Behold the merch. And uh, oh, let's unclamp this beastie, shall we? That's the baby. It's not even my smallest one. <laughs> okay. Now, the finish that I had planned is not going to work. So, I have come to the conclusion that I would kind of like to use sandpaper. Or not quite. This is spray mount adhesive. And this is 220 grit carborundum powder, uh, like you would find in wet and dry sandpaper. That is, that's a pretty cool look. So this is the 220 grit carborundum 
uh, with a little bit of finish on top, doesn't look very good. This, this is 80 grit carborundum powder with a little bit of flash coat over it. And that's giving a much better, much more highly textured look. I'm gonna start going in the middle and we will just see, just see what happens. <laughs> I love it. This is absolutely not what I had planned this morning. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I'm in a sand pit. That's what I'm doing. You I'm in a sand pit. I'm playing in a sand pit. <laughs> the initial coat is on, is sorted. Uh, <laughs> it's freaking awesome. I'm going to let that cure overnight, come back in and apply more. There is a hell of a lot of silicon carbide here. It is, it's a cool effect though. I'm about to go into the spray booth and apply a little bit of finish and then we'll go through and touch up with another coat and see, and see what happens. I don't know. All right, so uh, we're still going on, we're still going on. After the first coat, it's actually not looking too bad. We've got uh, fairly matte, a little bit of shine still coming through, but there are spots where I'm missing, I'm missing the carborundum, and uh, that's a bit of an issue. So there's a few areas. Uh, now, what I think I need to do actually is as I'm applying it, I need to tap it down and, and make that sort of a, make it just a little bit more positive. And there we go. So this is looking solid. It feels solid. Uh, the whole thing is coming together nicely. I I need to oh, I need to play with some acrylic now, don't I? Yeah. I'm going to go down to the spindle sanders, and I'm going to make it slightly smaller, following these lines. Yes, I'm wearing a flat cap, but it's cold and I'm bald. So I, uh, I put acrylic on both sides so that I wouldn't put the bevel on the wrong side on one of them. And there we have it. Okay. <laughs> I'm in love. I wish it was clear already. And there we have it. Okay, I'm going to need to put uh, some acrylic or something underneath here to get the correct angle eventually. But for now, I just want to sort out bridge positions and pickups and things.
So here we go. Now, I've figured out where my bridge needs to be, and I've gone and grabbed a couple of templates uh, from the Luthiers School. I'm going to work on this neck a little bit, and there isn't all that much to do. It's just uh, the old headstock shape, a little bit of sanding, and uh, yeah, well, this is going to be all right. It looks like a hot mess right now, but it's going to be all right. It has been a weekend and uh, I've got to change this headstock shape because quite frankly uh, the fender headstock just doesn't feel right and uh, I have used the masking tape and super glue trick to stick some acrylic on the bottom of this. I'm not actually going to glue the acrylic to the base of the, uh, uh, of the neck because the glue will be visible through the acrylic. I'm just going to have it as an interstitial piece between the two that gets clamped uh, in place. There we go. I quite like that. Works better with this body shape. On to pickups, people. Pickups. A while ago, I built a guitar raising money for the British Red Cross Ukraine Appeal. And uh, we raised about 15 grand actually in the end. These pickups were donated for that build from by Matt over at House of Tone, uh, one of my favorite pickup makers of all time. They are just, he is mind-blowingly clever. Now, while I was talking with him, I asked for these nickel covers, thinking that it would work well with the uh, silvery matte Goto uh, finish or hardware that I had at that point, and it just did not work. Now, another builder donated his set of these that were chrome for that build, and we are now using this for the GGBO build. I'm really happy, so thanks to both of those people, Mark and Matt. Nice. So lining up the centre line there and there on that shows it square with the neck, which is just confirming my suspicions. The, the wood goes to about here. I want a gap. So the uh, neck pickup is going to be a little bit further that way than normal. <laughs> We're there. Whew, that was scary. There's just a little bit too much material over here. You, you, you're in the way, and we've also got much thinner pickup because you don't have the giant surrounds over there. So I've actually gone back in my mind to the original thought of a tunematic and tailpiece. I hear you shouting at the screen, how are you going to install a tailpiece and tunematic on this guitar? It's just made up of two acrylic plates. Well, it's very clever, if I do say so myself, and very, very cool. Ah -ah. Yeah, I like this a lot. I'm going to take this neck off. Come on. Go. Ha ha. Okay. <laughs> I've got three tenths of a millimeter 
and I'm working with acrylic here. Can anybody say fire? Leatherman, he's this thing all the time for everything. That was intensely satisfying. Volume, tone, three-way. There we go, some fantastic little shims, various different degrees, etc. And uh, I think this might make this whole process a little bit easier for me. What's the biggest one we've got? 1.5 degrees. Well, it's a little bit big. I can, I can shim that down. Look at that. Aha! Oh, yes. Onwards. Still need to sand this neck down, of course. Doesn't need anything major, it's almost there. I'm going to be using both the uh, water based and the spirit based blacks to get a very, very, very deep colour. I'm really loving this headstock, really. So because I'd cut the, the Fender style headstock out, I was actually limited in the space I had to make that single swoop. And that forced a design choice, i.e. the size, that I now, well, think it should have been from the beginning. So there we go. Okay, so I want that one to be centered. This is uh, roughly where I think it should be. But essentially, center on there. We're at 47, and I want it to match there. Ah, 47. Woohoo! I'm really, really actually quite excited about this. We have got threaded inserts in this top that are M8. Okay, it's a fairly standard thread. I'm gonna be bolting this instrument together through the tailpiece inserts. It's gonna be cool. Then at the same time, if necessary, I can have a bolt threaded onto the underside of the bridge 
In fact, I am going to. So essentially, we've got uh, something in here putting the back in, and we've got something on in here pushing against the inside of the back, holding it away. So we've got both things. We've got the tension and compression going, and the strength that we need uh, to have you know, a good guitar. It's not offensive, is it? Do believe we have a guitar? I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I actually had to care which way up the springs went, so they're all matching and all uh, <laughs> pointed up conically. What's the right phrase? The heaters are on, I'm getting too hot now. Damn it. All right. You should always care about the final fit and finish. I'm icing a cake, yo! It's almost as if those wedges are not in there. Make a clear guitar, Ben. That'll be awesome, Ben. Yeah. Fingerprints, Ben. Fingerprints, Ben. that. Nice. Perfect. I'm going to go with just standard strap buttons for now. If I need to, I've considered bolts, but uh, yeah, we'll see. See if this thing bolts together.
<laughs> Let's move on to the neck, shall we? So leveling beam, bit of coarse paper, and we're good to go. Just mind your fingerprints, people. Ha ha ha. That was basically all it took. Half pencil on the top of the frets. This sets the, uh, the deepest that I want my slot to be, and then I'll just turn it over and well, I want to go a little bit lower than that, actually. Come on, Ben. That'll do. That'll do nicely. Uh, this is my sigil, this is something that I put on guitars quite a lot. And uh, I often put it in a square, but I'm not even going to do that this time. So today I'm just cutting through the stain. Into the maple. I'm going with some really nice locking shallow 510s and uh, again the, the locking nut here it, it, it has the same sort of feel as a uh, what's that bit the winding bit the crown the crown of the watch Isn't that cool? Hmm. Everything about the Goto 510s is just precision. You've got a little recess around where the screw goes. They are just incredibly nice tuners. I am a fan. Yeah. Mustn't forget those strap buttons. Like genuinely. Strap buttons, then strings. This is where, if it all goes wrong, it might actually just disintegrate. I don't think so.
All right, so the action's a bit high. I am actually going to have to put another shim in there, and you've all seen that, so I can do that after the end of this video. For all intents and purposes, this guitar is... is done. How will I live with myself? I actually spent longer looking for an appropriate strap than uh, I care to admit. This action is pretty high. It's very, very quiet. I've got no hum, got no noise, uh, no issues with that at all. I think that what I would like to do with the next one is actually make the outer, the outline potentially uh, in resin, i.e. we make a mold, we pour resin in, uh, only uh, slightly larger than we would need, and then machine a nice clear edge out of that onto which you sandwich acrylic, etc. Maybe, maybe not, we shall see. But uh, the, the end result is that I am, we're definitely going to be making more of these. The next watch-inspired build is going to be... I'm going to be going even further into the weeds. Now we know this works. We know the, the, the bolt system, all that does what it's supposed to do. I'm going to... I'm going to play around with bridges. I'm going to play around with gears. I'm going to play around with functional uh, art inspired by watches and uh, horology and all that, so that's going to be fun. But the most important thing is, well, this is GGBO 22. This is my invitational. The professional builders are doing their thing. The other invitational builders have done their thing. Please go and check out their instruments. And uh, it's, they're all available on greatguitargiveaway.com uh, right now. And uh, your tickets help us and uh, charities that the builders have chosen do all of their good work. So we really do appreciate your support. Uh, my only regret is that uh, since it's my competition, I'm not actually allowed to uh, buy tickets for any of these things. It's really, really sad. Catch you guys on the flip side. Have a good one. Cheers.